Friday on Night Rider, Michael and Kit roar back to Friday night. Works for me. And everybody's out to get him. The next move is up to you, Michael. I'll take my chances now. Friday. Production 60224, Night Sting. This episode was written by Herman Miller and directed by Sidney Hares. It originally aired on NBC Friday night, 8 p.m. on November 8, 1985. It was filmed from September 27th through October 7th of 1985. It was the 69th episode to air, but the 72nd to be produced. The synopsis reads as follows. Michael goes undercover as a hitman in order to stop a diplomatically immune man from leaving the country with a canister of deadly poison. All right, so let's go ahead and dig into this episode. Uh, right here on the title screen, we see a familiar filming location. This is the same filming location used for Helios, the Helios estate, in season one's Chariot of Gold. In reality, it's the Sisters of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, or at least it was, um, 3431 Waverly Drive in Los Angeles. And I recall in the news recently, within the last year or two, that uh, singer Katy Perry was trying to buy this estate, and there was a lot of controversy around that. So you might want to, I don't know, Google that, read about it? I don't know. All right, so take note here of the cars. We have one of the embassy, embassy cars back here, and then this is the Hollenbeck's car, uh, August and Gay Hollenbeck's car. I'm pointing that out for a specific reason, which we'll go into later. All right, so we have Michael inside of the insert car, the season four insert car. And if you look on the passenger seat, we've got the clapper board right there, or the slate marker, whatever you want to call it. Um, so how many cars were used in this episode, you may ask? There were eight cars, and they are the roll-caged acrylic window jump car, the season three and four hero car, the right-hand blind drive car, the hardtop uh, stunt car that we've had since season one, the general purpose T-top stunt car that's been around since the beginning of season three, the left-hand blind drive car, of course the season four insert car, and finally the full-time super pursuit mode car. There's your eight cars. So here's another one of those uh, kind of obvious goofs, I suppose you could say. Uh, first of all, this insert car that they're using here has no rearview mirror, but that uh, back glass, you can tell it's that breakaway, what is it called, sugar glass, something like that that they used back then. Um, look at, you see how it's not clear, how it's, how it's uh, wavy, right? So that's kind of your indication that it's going to get blown out. And also if you look here behind uh, the actress who played Gay Hollenbeck, you can see the camera mounted on the side of the car. All right, so going back to what we just said, this is obviously the roll cage acrylic window jump car. This is the final time in the series that we see this car. So let's take a moment and thank the roll cage acrylic window jump car for all of its fantastic jumps. Now, since the pilot, there has been a roll cage acrylic window jump car. However, it was not always the same Trans Am. Um, they, they only had one car at a time that was dedicated to be the roll caged acrylic window jump car. Um, so whenever that car was no longer usable, they took another Trans Am and converted it and made it the jump car. We know for sure there were at least two cars that played the role of the roll cage acrylic window jump car, probably more, but we can only, based on the evidence we have, Two is, is what we can 100% confirm, but chances are there was at least a couple more. So, goodbye, roll cage or click window jump car. Isn't that kind of sad? We're reaching that point in our episode commentaries where we say goodbye to things. Uh, there's going to be more of it. 
All right, and here, here's a perfect example. You can see the back window is breaking. And uh, so in the storyline, they were shooting, they shot, they hit Gay's dad, August, right? So they shoot him from behind, and they hit him at some point. So keep that in mind. Of course, here we see the stunt man and woman, and clearly the the uh, stunt guy who's playing August is is awake and alive and not passed out there. But here, look where he's actually shot. Right down here. Somehow, they were shooting from behind. There was a seat here. I guess I guess the bullet could go through the seat and, and into his chest. So I guess that's not totally crazy. All right, so now we are back at the foundation. In reality, stage one at Universal Studios. We have uh, Michael and the team looking at what appears to be a dot matrix printer, but I'm sure there's a computer underneath it. But take a look at this. Look in this back corner. See how you can see the wall here? Normally, Devin's armoire is right there. That's been there since season one, right? So there's a lot of uh, continuity issues regarding that armoire in this scene. So we, we see this, and then we see a close-up of Devin, and the armoire is back. All right? Then we see this close-up of the embassy, which in reality is the exact footage they used for the title card. In fact, there's August and Gay Hollenbeck's car still in front of the embassy on their surveillance footage here. All right, so then we see Devin walk away, and we see the armoire there, and then instantly it cuts to this, and the armoire is gone again. So... Where's the armoire? I don't know. But uh, every time you watch the scene now, you'll never be able to unsee the disappearing, appearing armoire. All right, so let's talk about the Lynx Imperial, the 1955 Lynx Imperial. So this was not a custom car built specifically for this episode. In fact, this Lynx Imperial is in reality the famous Moonliner. Uh, originally built by Jocko Johnson, I think, in 1959. And it was later purchased by um, Dean Moon in 1964. So it only sported this red and blue paint job for a brief period in the 80s, but normally it's yellow. So let me show you a couple um, photos of the car throughout the years. So here it is. Um, I don't know when this was. Quite a long time ago. Obviously, the picture's in black and white. But you can see it had a paint job here. And then it moved to this yellow paint job. There we go. There's a better shot of it. And I believe it's still in this yellow paint job today. Yeah, so Moonliner, formerly owned by Dean Moon, originally built in 1959 by Jocko Johnson, sporting his hand-formed aluminum bodywork. It was built around an awesome Allison V12 airplane engine, formerly a drag racing record holder and also run at Bonneville, owned by Moon Eyes. There you go. These pictures are from years ago, but I believe it's still in this museum. So there you go, there is the 55 Lynx Imperial. Also in this, so this is supposedly a garage um, from you know one of Flag's garages, but in the background we have more of the um, modern props, props, right? We've seen these panels back here and um, the one that comes to mind is Junkyard Dog, we see it. I think we see this panel again in Santa Rosa's. This console back here we just saw in um, The Wrong Crowd and we've seen it a few other times. So Devin actually goes undercover in this episode, which I think is, well, it's not the first time. We saw him go undercover in Big Iron, but it's obviously a rarity. But I believe this is the first time we see Devin's glasses, right? Throughout, um, off and on throughout the rest of the final season, we'll see Edward Mulhair wearing glasses. I don't know if they were his or just part of Devin's character, but this is the first time we see him with glasses on. All right, and then we see RC driving in uh, the Mercedes convertible, assuming, you know, this is supposedly Devin's Mercedes, right? Not the same one he had back in season one, which I think had a black interior. But we did see this exact same Mercedes convertible in season three's Halloween night. In fact, it even still has the same California license plate that we saw on it in Halloween night, California 1BH0934. Um uh, as a side note, when we asked Peter Paris about this episode, he said he really got a kick out of driving this Mercedes 450 SL convertible because at the time, it was his favorite car. 
And speaking of Peter Paris, um, in general, he really enjoyed this episode. He felt it was kind of like Mission Impossible where the whole team was going out. And he also really loved uh, Walter Gotell, who played um, uh, Simon Karaskis in this episode. And uh, he just remembered watching him uh, growing up in James Bond movies. So it was really cool for him to work with Walter. And he also said this was the episode where he and Patricia McPherson really connected, right? Because Peter was still fairly new to the show and, and they had some scenes together and they really got to know each other, which was pretty neat. And this is probably my fa one of my favorite reverse 180s from the show. This is reused footage from season two's Let It Be Me. But this is right when Michael tells Kit to go and get his transformation into the Lynx Imperial. And he does this really hard re reverse and then f whips around. Obviously, that's Jack Gill, but um, on, in the left-hand blind drive car. But just thought I'd bring that up. My favorite reverse 180 from the show. And this perspective really gives you an idea of how long that Moonliner is, right? Because that's a garage, and the car is like double the depth of the garage. Um, if anyone cares, this mansion, this where Alicia Craven Hall, aka Bonnie, lived, um, on two four two three Nottingham Avenue in Los Angeles. Uh, if you look it up on Street View, it's all there's a, a, a fence there and and high bushes, so you really can't see much. But that's exactly where this was filmed. And if you think about it, I think this is the episode where Patricia McPherson really gets the most to do in an episode. I mean, she's in it a lot, um, which is kind of yeah, you know, it's really cool to see that. And like I said, this is the same filming location as Helios, especially this angle and this front entrance. Um, so this is from Night Sting. And check this out. This is from Chariot of Gold. Both scenes with Bonnie. Both scenes with the Mercedes convertible. This is the Devon's original Mercedes with the black interior. And then here's uh, RC driving Bonnie getting out with the newer Mercedes at that exact same location. We get a great appearance by Larry Storch, who um, was probably most famous for his role in uh, F Troop. He plays the uh, mechanic in this episode, and he and Kit have some neat back and forths. Um, interestingly, he Larry Storch just passed away as of this recording like two weeks ago. I think it was two weeks ago. A little over two weeks ago. It's crazy, but um, he'll always be remembered by us as Pascal the Mechanic. And don't try and overthink how in the world they can form a Trans Am interior and exterior into this Lynx Imperial. But we do see that Kit's voice box is covered by this oil pressure gauge. And you can see, if you look at the bottom, the, uh, the logo is blacked out. This is a Stuart Warner um, oil pressure gauge. Interestingly, some of the Knight Rider cars that had dashes on it where they couldn't see the... Um, the actual gauges to determine if the car was, you know, overheating or whatever, they would have um, auxiliary gauges in the glove box. And I covered this all in a dedicated video. It's called something like, how did the stunt man know that kit was overheating? Anyways, they would use this exact gauge uh, to monitor oil pressure in kit, which I think is kind of ironic. But yeah, so supposedly that panel slides out and then there's the voice box. Not sure why the panel needs to move so kit can talk, but I guess that's just for us viewers. All right, and then we've got Michael once again wearing a different watch than the Comlink, right? Uh, like I said, I think he wears other watches more than he wears the Comlink watch. And once again, just like Chariot of Gold, this quarter was used from this exact angle in Chariot of Gold. Take a look. See, there you go. Door's still open and everything. Exactly the same. All right, so this is the scene where the Lynx Imperial is going to melt away and Kit shows up. If you look closely, the car is actually up on jack stands. And I think that's because this car is normally extremely low to the ground. And it would have looked awkward against the actor. So if you look right here, you can see a jack stand. They actually have the car lifted up um, just so it's kind of more in line with the, the actors. And then we see everything melting off of Kit and he's covered in this goo. Um pretty sure based on this corner of the nose we see that this is that general purpose t-top stunt car um because it was the it's one of two cars that still had the season three front nose on it and i'm pretty sure it's not the right hand blind drive car 
All right, so now we have Michael leaving in super pursuit mode. He's exiting the uh, um, gate here. Um, by the way, this location, um, at least this gate, I believe was also used in Night of the Rising Sun coming up, the penultimate episode of the series. Um, but I don't think we see the main building. We'll have to cover that when we get there. Anyways, he's in the Super Pursuit Mode car. Then we see this interior shot, and you can clearly tell that this is not the Super Pursuit Mode car, right? Because in SPM mode, the rear hatch lifts up, and this is not that way. This is just their regular insert car. But, you know, you see him fly out of here, and there's a whole conversation going with him, Michael, and Kit. And then in the background, you can see him driving out of that same gate again. So it's, you know, it's, again continuity things all right and then here we have again the right hand blind drive car it's only in this one brief scene but do you see some of these cables under here um you'll see them better when we cover killer kit but these cables um you know they had to have a way to steer throttle and brake from the passenger side so for the brake they actually had cables that would go from the factory brake pedal. They'd run up underneath the car and over to the passenger side. So when they hit the, the fake gas pedal on the right-hand side, it would actually engage the correct brake pedal on the driver's side. And that's what some of these um, cables are that you see underneath the car here. They're for the uh, braking system they added to this car. Alrighty, folks. Well, this was a short one. You know, Night Sting, there's not a ton to cover. And unfortunately, there's going to be some other episodes in Season 4 that are just kind of lackluster, so we're not going to have a lot to say. But we're covering it nonetheless. So next up, it's Michael's birthday. And we're going to celebrate by reviewing Many Happy Returns. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we will catch you next time.